Hi, everyone. How's it going? Jesse here on this awesome St. Patrick's Day. Can uh, somebody give me a sound check, please? Let me know that you can hear me okay. Okay. Who's the first person that's going to jump on my live stream here? Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay. Very important that we have audio. Otherwise, otherwise we're going to have some problems. So if you guys could make sure you let me know what's, I don't see any chat yet. I see people on the, I see people on the, on the live stream, but I don't see any comments yet. So maybe there's just a little lag here. Again, folks, please, uh, if somebody could let me know that you can hear me okay, that'd be fantastic. All right. Tabitha Jolene Roscoe Kennedy. What's up, Tabitha? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I'm here a little bit early today, as I usually like to come on, just to give everyone a chance to uh, to get out, to find the feed, <clears throat> especially on Facebook. Sometimes it might it be a little tricky to find it. So I'm going to give you guys a little time. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today. So if I seem a little bit low energy. It's because of that. I got my second COVID shot last week. And I don't know that this is related. It's been about five days, six days now, but I started feeling symptoms last night. Just fatigue, a little bit of fever, you know. But anyway, here we are. It's not that crazy. After this, I'm going to go home and rest, cover up. Okay, I'm not in contact with anybody just in case it's actually COVID and not the just the symptoms from the uh, from the shot. But anyway, enough about that. Hope everybody's doing fantastically today. Um, make sure you guys let me know in the comments section if you guys have a birthday today. I'm assuming we're going to have a bunch of kiddos hanging out with us today, which is fantastic. But uh, let me know in the comments if anybody's celebrating a birthday, an anniversary. Also, let me know where you're painting from, who you're painting with and whether it's your first time or not, okay? That would be awesome to know. I'm sure we have a few uh, first timers. Wanda K, happy St. Patrick's Day to you and to everybody else. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. So we're gonna have a little fun with the little leprechaun here in just a, just a bit. We're gonna start right at about, it's about four minutes from now. We're gonna start right then. What's happening, Lisa? How are you? Marsha Hibison, how's it going, Marsha? Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it. Let's see. Who else is on here? Thank you, Kelly. First timer. Fantastic. And then uh, my youngest daughter, his birthday's on Saturday. Mine was on the 12th. Well, happy belated birthday to you and happy early birthday to you, to your daughter, Tabitha. Okay. Thank you for joining in today. We're going to have a little fun as we typically do. Let's see, Renee Roberts. Everybody say happy birthday to Renee Roberts' son. She, he's 10 years old today. Happy birthday to, the, to you. Fantastic. Thank you for coming out and hanging out with us on your birthday. Carrie Richard says, happy St. Patrick's Day from Cam and Carrie in Southwest Texas. Well, Saint, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Let's see, Araceli Reyes from... Guaynabo, Puerto Rico. What's happening? Aracelis. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Welcome. Glad that you're here. First timer, another first timer. So fantastic. I'm sure we're going to have quite a few first timers today. Uh, hoping to join us and have some fun on our uh, painting, paint along today. For those of you that don't know, on Friday, this coming Friday, let me, let me do a little close up here because I think I'm too far away. The Mandalorian and Grogu. It's this coming uh, Friday, two days from today. Okay, this is the way. I'll be teaching you guys how to draw this from scratch. Um, we're painting it all completely from scratch, of course, as we always do. Uh, but if you need the stencil, the stencil is under the discussion tab on the event page. Go over, find the event, click on the discussion tab, and you'll see the stencil for this is the way. But I'll be teaching you guys how to draw this from scratch, just like I am today. Okay, but again, this is Friday. All right. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are excited about that. I am a Mandalorian fan. I watched the series. Um, you know, pretty cool little series. I've been a Star Wars fan. Not a huge Star Wars fan, but pretty good Star Wars fan. But definitely Mandalorian, and that show was pretty awesome. So anyhow, that is this coming Friday, okay? 3 o'clock, I believe. It's either 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. 
pretty certain it's 3 o'clock Pacific time. So wherever you are, if you plan on attending, just make sure you adjust for that time zone. Okay? Very, very important. I'm sure th those of you that are here on the, on the session today, of course, know what I'm talking about. But all right. Sharon Hines, hello from St. Paul's New NL. NL. Is that um, is that Canada? Cynthia Liz, Lauren from San Juan, Puerto Rico. What's happening, Cynthia and Lauren? Welcome. Let's see. So, folks, we're about to start here in just a moment. And I'll, I'll talk about the supplies and how we're going to do this here pretty quickly. But just so that you guys know, the video is being recorded. Okay. So, if you guys cannot uh, paint along, with me today. You'll be able to find this video both on Facebook and on YouTube. Facebook, you would just go into the live tab on the main page and click on there. You'll see all the old videos that we've got on here. Of course, this one will be there as well. YouTube's pretty easy. You just go to the last video and that's where it should be. La last live video. Okay. So again, if you cannot join us today for the entire session or you can't join us at all, this will be available to you for you to go watch after or if you fall too far behind, the same thing. Don't stress too much about it. If you're falling behind, do your best to keep up and then uh, simply come join in with the recorded session after we're all done, okay? But all right, it is 2 p.m. my time. So it's uh, we're ready to get going. I just wanna thank all of you and wish you all a happy St. Patrick's Day. My name is Jesse. You are on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook and on YouTube. We are simultaneously live streaming to both platforms. We've been doing that for a little while now, so things have been going pretty well. What are we doing today? Glad you asked. We're gonna be painting this super cool little leprechaun. We're gonna be drawing him first though. We're gonna be drawing him from scratch. So you guys all want to have, I'm going to be using a pencil today, okay? I normally, well, it just depends. I sometimes alternate. Sometimes I'll use a piece of chalk. Sometimes I'll use a pencil. I'm going to be using a pencil because I'm drawing the leprechaun first. Then I will be painting him. Sometimes I'll paint the background first, then draw over the background. But today we're going to be drawing the leprechaun first. So the first thing you're going to be doing, needing is something to draw with. Hopefully you have something that you can erase. Okay, so there's our pencil. Paper towels, very important. Okay, paper towels, you want to have paper towels. Clean up messes, clean up our brushes in between steps. Speaking of which, I've got a cup here some water in it, and I've got the brushes that we'll be using today. I'll go over these in just a little bit. Don't stress too much on the brushes. As long as you've got something similar, something you can work with, you're going to be okay. The colors that I'm going to be using, acrylic, that's acrylic paint for me. I've got this phthalo blue. Okay, I'll be using this paint just for the eye, for our, my lepre leprechaun's eyes, and then I'll be mixing this with some white for that background color. Okay, I've got a little bit of uh, yellow some black, okay, some orange, some pink, okay, so the pink, there's nothing obviously pink on our little leprechaun, but I'm going to be mixing this with some orange and some white to create the skin toned color, uh, skin toned color on our leprechaun. You could also do that with a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. We'll talk about that some more when we get to that point, but again, I've got pink and orange and white. I'll be mixing those to create the skin tone for the leprechaun. <clears throat> of course, I have white, okay, some white. And then, of course, you can't have a St. Patrick's Day leprechaun painting without green, so I've got some green right here. I may be mixing this a little bit with uh, yellow to lighten it up a little bit, but we'll see, okay? But those are the colors. I have a, I use a paper plate today for my palette. I've got my paints uh, placed out here already, what we're gonna be using for the painting. I've got some green, black, yellow, blue, white, orange, and red. Never mind all the other dried splotches on there, but essentially on my plate, I've got the colors that I just listed. Okay, let's talk about those brushes really quickly. I'm going to give you guys a close up. Make sure you're looking over at the leprechaun because that's where I'm going to, right here on the blank canvas. Oh, of course, I'm using a blank eight by 10 inch canvas for today's uh, painting. You can use whatever you have, but the brushes, Okay, first brush that I'm going to be using once we start to paint, or one of the brushes I'll be using is this one inch brush. Good for backgrounds. 
Okay, I can paint the background. This is a one inch flat brush. If you've got something similar to this, great. If not, no big deal. Okay, you can again use whatever you've got. Then I've got a number five flat brush. Okay, pretty basic, kind of similar in shape to the other one. Actually very similar in shape. And this is for little details, painting on the inside of the hat, the floor, things like that. Again, don't worry too much. As long as you've got something similar, you're okay. Next brush, I've got a Filbert <clears throat> number, uh, number four. It's got a rounded head. <clears throat> okay, a little filbert with a rounded head. They got rounded heads on them. These are good for painting in curved areas, curved edges. One of, good, one of the things that they're good for. Okay, all the little areas around the beard, things like that. Again, if you don't have something like this, don't stress about it. Or if you've got a slightly different size, um, <clears throat> no big deal. And then lastly, we've got a round zero. Okay, this is just a very pointy brush. We'll use this to create details like the eyebrows outlining the uh, clothing, things like that. Okay, so those are the four main brushes I'll be using. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start right into the drawing. So <clears throat> if you guys are all ready to go, let's do it. Okay, get your pencils ready. Oh, and don't forget folks, don't, <clears throat> do not click on any of the spammers in the, yeah, get you out of here. Spammers like to come on here. Give me one second, okay. Be careful with the spammers, folks, or spammers. I see them in the comment section, one in particular. I've already banned him, deleted one of his comments, but be careful, don't click on those links, okay? Hold on one second. So the way we do this, and like I said, we're gonna start with the, uh, with the drawing portion of this, is I outline a step on my end. I give you a little time to implement it on your end. And then we move on to the next step. In between steps, I come over to the comments, look at your questions, look at your hellos, et cetera. Okay, but in between steps, I'm primarily looking over here at my canvas. So if you guys post a question or something and I miss it, please don't get too upset. Just let me know, you know, don't get upset thinking that I'm ignoring you. Uh, just simply post again sometime later, all right? But uh, anyway, so that's how we do it. I outline a step, give you a little bit of time to implement it, and then I go on to the next step. So here we go. Here's my pencil, trusty little pencil. I should have sharpened, sharpened it before we started, but this will be okay. What I want you guys to do first, before we do anything, we always assess how much space we have to create what it is that we're going to draw. We don't wanna start on something and then realize we made some portion too big and we don't have enough room for the rest of it, okay? Uh, it's kind of a pain to have to go back and erase and correct things when it's a whole bunch of stuff that you have to go back and correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start here at the top, near the top of my eight by 10 canvas. And again, I know everybody's using something different. I'm just gonna mark off really lightly, okay? The top of my leprechaun's hat, approximately where the top's going to be. From there, I'm gonna come down and right about down here somewhere is the bottom of the hat. This is the brim. The bottom of our brim. I'm just blocking things out on my canvas before I actually start putting in details so that I make sure I have enough room for the leprechaun, okay, for, the, for everything on our leprechaun, okay? The next step is the little face. If you notice, the little face is significantly larger than the hat. Now this isn't, doesn't have to be perfect on your end. Yours could be a little smaller, yours could be a little larger. But again, what you wanna watch out for is that you leave enough room. But this part here, the chin, his chin, not his beard, but the chin part is somewhere about right here. So again, I'm just going through and blocking off the sections, the main components. We got our hat, we got the head without the beard, and then, or you could also, it could also be, it could also include the beard. Doesn't really matter too much. Okay, these, these things can all change. This isn't set in stone. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in where the, uh, where his coat is and his coat, his coat is approximately right about right here, okay? And I just, if you notice, I did this at a slight angle because his coat kind of does that. And then his little feet end up over here somewhere. There we go. So we've got some blocked out areas. And now if you're using a stencil, if you haven't yet, you wanna go ahead and start tracing it on, um, onto your canvas, okay? And anything on the inside, if you already put it, if, you, if you've already traced your stencil, 
If you've already got your leprechaun on your canvas, but you're missing the eyes or any of the details on the inside, pay attention to when I add those so you can add them on your end, okay? So, all right, we got everything blocked off. We're not worried about the arms right now or the, or the clover. I just want to make sure I've got enough room over here to put that in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start right in here, this big U shape that lives under this hat. Here's the brim of the hat, okay? And I can, I can refine it a little bit, okay? Just darkening my, my, hat, my line for that hat a little bit. Now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make a big U. Kind of comes around like this, comes back up. Big U. And what is that? Well, that's his face, right? It's the outline of his face. Now I can come in here and I can just remove this line because we don't need it anymore. Okay, from there, we're going to go to the brim. The brim is just a really long, uh, almost like a rectangle that's pointy on both ends. So find the little spot for the bottom, come over, little pointy on both sides. And then just clean up a little. You don't have to clean up all of your pencil lines or chalk or whatever you're using. We're going to paint over a lot of this so you're not going to see it. If you're drawing this with pencil, please do not um, draw lines really, really dark. You want to be able to erase them without any problems, okay? So, all right. Here we go. Sorry if I'm swallowing in your ear, but I keep got to keep my throat dry. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, of course, I'm going to draw the top part of the hat. And of course, we've already said top part of the hat. And I'm just making a little adjustment. Kind of curves like this. It's, it's right there. Now, if you notice, the edges of the hat come out further than what the face is. The edge of the face. Okay, it's a little wider. So we can come out like this. Comes down, slightly curved. Again, nice and light with your lines so that you can erase them if you need to make an adjustment. So this is a little bit wider than the face, than the outline for the face, okay? But all right, take a moment with that. You guys got about 30 seconds before we go on to the next step, and I apologize for clapping your ear. My mic is right here, and I just clapped, probably blew, blew out some of your eardrums, if you're, especially if you're listening with headphones or something like that. But okay, happy birthday, Jessica. What's happening, Gloria Marie? Jessica Siegler, happy birthday. Siegler, happy birthday. You're hanging out with us on our bir on your birthday. Is that is that what I'm understanding? Or is your birthday coming up here pretty soon? All right, block user. I got another block user I got to block. I got rid, rid of most of the spammers. Um, but we still have a few that pop in here and there. Okay, here we go. Next step. We're going to go ahead and put in this little square here for the buckle in the center. Okay, just a square. Find us some area here in the middle. And it could be a big buckle. It could be a little buckle. We're doing the outside area first. Just a big old square. And I can already see this buckle is bigger than that one. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. If I wanted to fix it, I would just erase and make it smaller. Okay, so there's the outside part. Now we're going to do the inside. Starting over here, I'm going to come inside. Comes over, comes down, right here. Comes back in towards the inside. And then comes back down. Let me give you all a little close up. Okay, now from there, the strap, the black part, we're just going to go like this. Across and across. Easy does it. No, nothing fancy, nothing crazy, no big deal. Okay. But all right. What's happening, Catherine? How are you? Catherine Cruz. Ivy Berkowitz Bowles. Hi from San Diego. Hi, Ivy. My, uh, about an, you're about an hour and a half south from me. My south. Southern neighbor, that's, that's what you are to me. 
All right, here we go. Let's continue. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and do the little the beard part. Remember, don't go too big on the beard, right? Don't go too low. You want to leave enough room. So the beard and the the beard and the edge of the hat can line up. So right here, I can just kind of come down here. And all I'm going to do is make kind of a wavy line down here underneath the face. Comes down, goes back up, comes across, all the way up. Now notice, folks, I'm holding my pencil pretty. Uh, pretty loosely for the most part towards the back of the, when I start to get precise, I need to come closer, right? Those are the tricks. I'm also putting my finger on the canvas as I'm creating some of my lines, putting my hand down right on that canvas gives me, gives my hand stability. So it doesn't shake as much and it just makes it a little bit easier to work in those lines. But okay, so we've got the face in place. Okay, before we do any, we, we've got the head. We don't have any detail on the face. We're going to leave that alone for now. We're going to start in on the body, this coat. Now, I need to make a little adjustment to this. It's a little bit too high. I'm also gonna make this a little bit smaller. Now, don't stress about trying to make your painting look exactly like the original. Just have fun with this. Everyone's gonna have a different looking leprechaun. That's part of the fun. Okay, just gonna remove that line a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna go and recreate it. So it's about right here. This is the bottom edge of the coat, and it kind of does this. Goes up at an angle like this, goes up, a little peak, comes over on the other side, comes down. And then the little coat is a little bit wider, right? This is a little bit wider than his head. So you can kind of just gauge it like that. Then we're going to come up like this. Okay, connect that there. This is going to come up. And I can connect that right there. In a little bit when we add the arms, I'm going to go and erase in here to connect the arms to his body. Okay, but for now, this is all you need. Slightly angled, got a little point, comes back up, okay? On both sides, connect next to his beard somewhere on both sides. Now his little pants, probably the trickiest part of all this. Right over here, I'm gonna bring a little curved line that goes like that. Okay, over on this side, same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this line. Don't need it. Just kind of in the way. What's happening, Ian? Hello to you. <laughs> Does it look like my beard? Yeah, that's why I should have. I should have dyed. It's a little shorter today than I normally have it, or normal have normally had it. But I should have dyed it orange. That would have been hilarious. And uh, green hat. Oh, of course, you guys all noticed, right? I got to be wearing green today for St. Patrick's Day, right? But okay, let's continue. So. This is this outer edge, of course, is this part of that leg. This outer edge over here is this curve right here. We're gonna continue with that leg. It's gonna come down, okay? And then I'm just gonna go right into, go into that shoe. And the shoe kind of does this little curled thing like that. Comes back, okay, like this. Goes up and over. I know that's the trickiest part of this whole thing, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of time, okay? Then we're just going to continue with the angle, goes up, kind of curves like that. Back the other way. Oops, I think I'm going to adjust this shoe a little bit, a little too big. It's going to make it a little, little. Uh, it's going to come down a little bit more. Again, nothing wrong with erasing. I always tell everyone when I'm teaching drawing parts of something, you know, whenever we're drawing, I tell you it is not a problem to have to erase. For some reason, some people really hate having to erase. It's like they get this real perfection uh, mindset where everything's a perfectionist mindset where everything has to be just exactly right the very first time they put their pencil down. That's not how it works. Even the best drawers on the planet have to erase. Okay, that's how it goes. But anyway, right here, we're going to come over like this. We are in the trickiest part of this whole drawing, I think, for most of us. Of course, this part right here is that underneath his pant leg comes around, curves down, Goes like that. Okay. And again, don't stress too much if you're falling behind. The video is available for you to watch afterwards. If you fall too far behind and you wait till right after we're done, you're going to be able to go right over and watch the recorded session. Okay. All right. Other shoe. We got the back part of the shoe. Goes like this. Goes back and down. Comes down like this. I'm not leaving myself a lot of room for the floor. He's kind of jumping in the air on mine. 
We'll see. We'll figure it out. Not too stressed. Hopefully you guys all got enough room on yours. But this does not make does not make or break the painting. Okay? So no big deal. There's the shoe. Maybe my little guy won't be jumping so high. Or maybe I'll we'll have a little tiny edge on the ground. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and reduce the size of the coat and then bring that up a little bit. Maybe bring down the, the face a bit. But it's not that big of a deal. Very quickly, very easily, you can run out of space. And that's why you want to block things out. And even with me doing that, as you guys can see, I ran out of a little bit, little bit of space. But again, it's not the end of the world, so no big deal. But all right, here we go. We've got the little shoes. We're going to go ahead and add. Let's see here. We're not, we're not going to add any detail to those shoes yet. I want to go ahead and work on these arms. Okay? So we're going to start with this arm over here. This little arm, the top part, is, uh, starts right over here somewhere. It comes out. Okay? It's going to go into that little bend, so it goes up. Okay. Sounds good, Caroline. Carolyn, if you want to watch this later, fantastic. What's up, Ro Ro? Hello to you. <laughs> yeah, my favorite leprechaun is the ugly one from the movie. Yeah, that thing's that thing's pretty scary looking. Maybe we'll do that one for Halloween. Okay, right here. Across, we're going to come over to the other side. Whoops. Come over to the other side. Come down. Okay, now this is going to angle back in, connect to the coat. We don't need this line in here anymore, so we erase that. Still need our beard. Don't erase the beard, Jesse. Okay. Okay, right over the top, we got this rectangle for the cuff. There's a little coat, Just a little rectangle over the top. Extends out a little bit further than the actual sleeve. Okay, another tricky part coming up, the hand. I know lots of people have a hard time with hands. Maybe with the hands, uh, you're gonna take a few tries, okay? But the hand is, once you try them a few times, you, you, you'll see you'll start doing okay. You'll get better at hands over time, but you need practice. Right here towards the inside, come up. That's this line right here. Goes out into a pinky. The edge of the pinky anyway. I'm not going to worry about the other fingers just yet or, or continuing with the fingers. I'm going to come over to the other side. Come over. Comes up. Finger. Yeah, human hands are tricky. Hands are definitely tricky, but with practice. It's all about practice. All right, here we go. We're going to start with this pinky right here. Comes back in. Okay. Now notice I'm holding my pencil towards the front. Gives me more control, more precision here. Goes up. Comes back down. Okay. Three fingers. Okay, four fingers, and then I'm going to go ahead and drop this one down a little bit, just making a little adjustment. Well, palm comes in. There we go. There's his little hand. He's waving hello to everybody, wishing everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day. He's going, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Thank you for coming and drawing me today. Okay. So there's that little hand. I'm going to give you guys about a minute. Like I said, I know hands are tricky. So I'm going to give you guys about a minute to get that in there. And then we're going to start on the other arm. So in the meantime, let's take a look at uh, the comment section. Don't forget, for those of you that might have gotten here a little bit late, tomorrow, no, sorry, Friday, the Mandalorian, Mr. Mando and Grogu. 3 p.m., I believe it is. I'll be teaching you how to draw this from scratch. Okay, but there is a stencil available for those of you that would like to use a stencil. You'll simply go over to the event tab here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook. Click on the um, event tab. <laughs> go to the discussion board at the bottom, and you'll see. You don't have to go back too far, but you'll see the, the uh, stencil there. Okay, 
If you have a hard time downloading that stencil, you can simply email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com and I'll get that over to you. But all right, here we go. Other arm over here. Down here under the beard. Comes out. See my hand now? My hand positioning uh, goes a little further back. I'm also using this hand here, my non-drawing hand. I put it on my table. I put my drawing hand over the top. And that stabilizes my drawing, my lines. Makes it a little easier to make straight lines. Keeps my hands from shaking a bit. So here we go. Especially if, you, if you've had coffee, if you have a medical condition. I know certain medications and things like that can make your hands shake. Here we go. Going back up. Got to make sure we leave enough room for the hand and for the little shamrock. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to make a an executive decision right here. I'm going to bring this. Upward a little bit at an angle. There we go. Okay. I was, I was too far over. I wasn't even going to be able to fit everything in or it would have been a little scrunched up. But here we go. Sleeve back down. Looking forward to seeing what everybody comes up with. So for those of you that have been painting with me for a while, you already know. I like for you guys to send me pictures of your masterpieces. You can send them right here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook. Just over Messenger to Painting with Jesse. You can also email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, especially those of you that are on uh, YouTube. Okay. Then what I do is I'll take, I'll grab the big batch of pictures that you guys send over over the next day or so. And then I make a really big post where I share, um, where I share the pictures with everyone. You get to see what everybody else did. Pretty fun. Okay, here we go. A little uh, cuff on top. Okay. Now this hand, obviously, he's kind of doing this. You can't see his knuckles. Okay, I didn't put his knuckles in because I didn't want to make it too difficult, but he's basically doing this with the shamrock. Shamrock's like this. He's doing that. Okay. So, ooh, ooh, ooh hold on, hold on, hold on. Got to make an adjustment here. Got too much of an angle. They didn't take into account that the shamrock's going to be coming off that hand. So I'm going to shorten this just a little bit. Give myself a little bit more room. There we go. Okay, got the sleeve on top, the cuff. Again, I had to make an adjustment because the hand has to come out this way so the shamrock comes up. Otherwise, his little hand would have to be straight up like this, and the shamrock would go sideways, <laughs> maybe into, into his eyeball or something. But here we go. The, the hand, we do this. We're drawing the thumb right now. Comes up. Okay, we got the, uh, the wrist part. Comes up and over. Oops, goes out and up, I should say. Then goes up. Comes back. Thumb. That's better. Thumbs up, Shriva. Shriya, thumbs up. And don't worry, folks. Again, don't stress. Have fun with this. You can come back and do it again immediately after. You can do it as many times as you want. And each time you do it, I guarantee you're going to get better at this, okay? So if you're stressing out about what's happening right now, just relax. Have fun. I mean, all you're really doing is, is relaxing a little bit or trying to relax with some art. So don't stress too much about how yours is coming out. Do your best and then just go with it. Okay, I'm going to add the little stem down here at the bottom. Just comes out, comes back in. Okay, comes up over the top like that. The other edge comes up like this. Okay, and then we can go ahead and put in, now this is a three leaf clover, wasn't as lucky, <laughs> but you could make it into a four leaf if you'd like. And if you notice, these are just little hearts, okay, the tops of the hearts. If you were to actually go like this, heart, 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 that's all you really need. That's actually what we're going to do right now. We're going to go. There's one heart. Okay. Two heart. 
Okay. And number three heart. They all meet in the middle. But now you can make little adjustments. Just making mine a little bit bigger. Cleaning up some lines. There we go. Okay, and then maybe I'm going to adjust where the stem connects to the shamrock. Remember, this is all going to be covered in paint, so don't stress too much about getting rid of all your lines. Only get rid of them if they're really dark. Because you don't want them coming through on the when you're painting, right? It, oh, through the paint layer. Some of the colors are really transparent. They can come in. Judy Spicer, may the luck of the Irish be with you all, she says, and with you, Judy. Awesome. Okay, so here we go. The last thing we're going to do as far as, actually, no, we're going to start adding details now. But we're going to come into the face now and add all the little details in that face. So we're going to start with a little tuft of hair here at the, here at the top. Little tiny. Okay, don't want to make it too low because you've got to leave space for the eyebrows and the eyes and the mouth. I'm going to come down here to the mouth. Basically, our little leprechaun has a big water melon slice shaped mouth. I'm just going to do this. Okay, nice and happy guy. He's happy it's the, uh, it's the 17th today. Okay, here we go. The eyes now, little ovals. This guy is just happy it's St. Patrick's Day. One little oval, another little oval. Okay. Inside, the blue part, which is outlining the area that's eventually going to be blue. The black part. And then we're not worried about the white part. I'll add that in later. Okay. Work on that for just a moment. Get all caught up. I know I went rather quickly through that. We still got the eyebrows and the, and the nose, the little shadow underneath the nose. So work on that for just a moment and we'll continue. Going to be adding quite a few more events here pretty soon. So make sure you guys are on the lookout. If you have not yet, please be sure to follow the page, like and follow the page on Facebook. For those of you that are on YouTube, it would be greatly appreciated because I'm I'm just barely starting to grow the channel there. If you guys could put comments into the comments, both actually Facebook and YouTube, if you guys could put some comments in, make sure there's some interaction. It helps with the algorithm, but also please make sure you like the page, okay, that would be fantastic, especially those of you that are on YouTube, okay? YouTube's a little harder to grow on right now, but um, we are growing a little bit there. Here we go, eyebrows. We're going to start right here on the bottom, on the this eye over here, this little curved line underneath. Okay, it comes up almost like we're drawing a little worm, a little caterpillar. Okay, other side. Okay. 
And then for the nose, all you need is a, it's the shadow underneath. It's kind of long curved little. It's almost like you're making another mouth. Let me give you all a close up. That's just the bottom of his nose. Okay. You guys got about a minute to catch up with that, and then we're moving on and adding more detail. We're almost done. We're almost ready to paint. Okay, the, the part that I think most of you are looking forward to. So, yeah, this hand right here might look a little awkward. It's just missing the, the thumbs. I mean, the fingers, right? The leprechaun's doing this, so it's missing the fingers. That's why it looks a little bit odd, but that's okay. All right, here we go. The coat, let's look at the coat. Okay, so here's the bottom edge of this coat, okay? Here's where it's open. So right about right here somewhere, we're going to draw a line that goes down at an angle, like that, okay? Then over here, we're gonna do the same thing. Make sure you leave enough of an, of an opening. Kind of does that. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and add the, add the little buckle, the square for the buckle. Kind of like what we did with the hat. We're doing the outside first, and then on the inside, a little square. Okay. And then the little belt straps that go to the sides. Just draw. All we need is one line on each side, just like that. Okay, now the collars, the collars on the coat, right here, connects back, right here, into a point, kind of goes back and connects, just like that. Let's look at the shoes, right over the top, the top of the shoe, and let's close those. We got a square right here, a little square for that buckle. Each side, square, all it is is exactly the same steps as what we did on these other buckles. You do the outside and then, the, and then you do the inside. Okay, you guys got about 15 seconds. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the socks. Put in some little lines for the socks, the stripes in the socks, and you're good to go. When you're all done, take a little step back, make sure you're not missing anything. And then we are ready to paint, okay? So you guys have about one minute to get yourselves ready to paint. Maybe less, maybe less. For those of you that saw my post yesterday on Facebook about an upcoming session, check this out. Okay, it's not quite done yet. It's got a couple little minor details to add, but that's what we're going to be doing here pretty soon. Okay, a little window maybe in Tuscany somewhere. Yeah, I got to add a few more little flowers and maybe some glitter. I'll be adding a little bit of glitter to this one. But for those of you that are interested, that's the one we're going to be doing here uh, sometime in the next few weeks, two, three weeks or so. I'm not sure yet on the, on the uh, time frame. Okay? But anyway, I posted a kind of sneak peek, a sneak peek yesterday. So that's that. All right, here we go. Let's draw. Let's paint. We just drew, Jesse. We just drew. Now we got to paint. All right. So I'm going to start. I'm actually going to start with one of my smaller brushes. I'm going to start with my little flat brush. Okay. Now, my background is light blue. I don't have any light blue on my plate. I'm going to grab a little bit of this blue and a bunch of white. I'm going to create a nice light background, light blue background by mixing some blue and some, some white. The main thing you guys want to, be, want to be careful with is that you mix enough color to cover your entire background. 
Okay, you don't want to run out part way because you're mixing your colors. Having to trying to match a color that's already mixed when you run out is a little bit tricky. So again, make sure you mix enough. Maybe some of you are going to have a different color background. It's, it's okay too. But there's my light blue. Okay, we're going to go like this. Whoops. Got a little bit of uh, paint on the coat there. Just going to take a paper towel with a little bit of water in it. Uh, and we're going to clean this off right there, just like that. But here we go. I'm going to outline everything around my leprechaun first. And the reason why I'm using a small, actually, maybe I won't need the big brush. We'll see. You always want to have the big brushes handy because they come in handy. But if you find a different brush that does the job, well, stick with that. So just going through and outlining everything. I'm being careful that I don't add any paint over my lines, right? That I don't spread this light blue paint into my leprechaun's uh, body, clothing. Don't forget, folks, send me pictures of your masterpieces. Whoops. Actually covered up a little bit of my finger. That's all right. So remember when we do the skin color? I mentioned at the beginning we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna be mixing colors. Have some pink, some yellow, and some uh, white that I'll be mixing together to get my skin tone color. You also use a little, a little bit of brown if you'd like. But just letting you all know, those are the colors we're going to be mixing. In case you didn't catch that at the beginning, you can also use red, yellow, and white. Different ratios. All right, I think I've got everything surrounding my leprechaun, but here we go. Now I'm going to use this pattern right here. I'm just going to kind of crisscross using these little short strokes with my number five flat brush. So I'm just carefully going around everything, right? Want to, again, want to make sure that we don't add any paint of this blue color paint where we don't want it. If you need to switch to a smaller brush, like a, like a real skinny brush to get in between some of these little uh, nooks, crevices, little corners of the outer edge of your leprechaun, go ahead and do so. Or like in little areas between your, you know, the leaves on your foreleaf, on your, on your shamrock. But all right. I am going to do going to do that. I'm going to grab my little skinny round brush here. I'm going to grab a little bit of this blue. Just going to use it to refine the edges. I 
All right. Yes, of course, if you'd like to add clouds, absolutely, my, my, uh, be my guest. Again, everybody gets to do whatever you want. It's your painting, so as long as you're happy with it, I'm happy that you're happy, okay? Uh, so if you want to add clouds, if you want to add something else, a rainbow, even a pot of gold, all of that will be perfect. You got it, Teresa Marie, my pleasure. Okay. You guys got about a minute. And don't worry if you're not done with the background. When I start with the next step, the background's easy. You can always come back to it, right? You can always come back and finish that up later. So don't stress. This is a stress-free environment. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take some green now. Same brush. I'll be using my little flat brush here. The one that I just used for the background. I'm going to dip it right into my green. Right here at the hat. Now I can, you know what I'm better off? If you guys have a, a small filbert brush, the one with the little rounded head, this is a little bit easier to do on the rounded parts of the hat. These, When you're doing the little corners like this, this is a little bit easier to use, this flat with the uh, nice corners. But either one still will get you there. So whichever one you want to use is perfectly fine. Okay, there's my hat. Now I am going to, going to go ahead and switch to my filbert. Anytime you're not using a brush, it goes back into your water cup. Okay, in case you're not familiar with the process, you want to make sure your brushes don't dry out on you while you're painting. It'll ruin your brushes. So just grabbing some of my green here. I'm going to come in here to the coat. Now right here I'm using the skinny part of my brush to get in the edge first, to outline everything first. Not doing the collar just yet because the collar is a lighter color, lighter green. I'll be mixing some green and some yellow to get that light green here. So just painting the sleeve. The rest of the coat. And then again, if you're, if you're new with your acrylic painting, the first layer is always pretty transparent. Looks uneven. Don't sit there worrying about that too much. Just put your layer down and then let's move on. You'll come back and add another second, another layer later. Sometimes you require three layers. But the last thing you want to do is get stuck on one area trying to fix your first layer of paint because that won't work. Or not usually anyway. Maybe more expensive full body paint will give you the coverage you want on the first step, but even those I've seen usually don't. All right. There's my coat. Oh, I'm gonna do the shirt. It's got a little undershirt. There we go. Then I might as well use the same color for the stripes on the socks. Careful with your brush selection because this area is pretty small. Really easy to go beyond your lines like I just did. There's my little stripes. Okay. So you guys, let guys have about a minute. Ananda. You're, what are you stuck with, Ananda? Let me know in the comments. Maybe maybe we can help you. Hope you all you're all having a good time here. I know that I am. 
And hopefully you guys all have some nice plans for the rest of your day if you haven't already been enjoying it. St. Patrick's Day is a good day to hang out with family and friends, have a little something to drink, eat, go to a, a local watering hole maybe. So hopefully you're all doing something fun. But all right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same brush that I was just using, my little round brush, some green and some yellow. We're going to mix the two together. Okay, we're going to grab some, some yellow like this. I'm going to make a lighter green version. Okay, so I've already got green on my brush. I mix the yellow and the green. I make it nice and light. Okay, kind of like that. You're going to need more yellow than you do green. But once you've got the color that you want, this is kind of a lime green color, kind of similar to my, to my apron. You're going to come in here, almost like a fluorescent green. Paint the inside of the pants. Paint the pants. Little green guy, green guy's pants right there. And then the collar, don't forget the collars. Anything that's the same color, I try to do all at the same time. Makes no sense to be jumping back and forth with, between different colors if you if you got the same color to be used in different spots. So for example, the, the pants, the collar, the sleeves, or the um, cuffs on the shirts. There we are. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't put any green on my on my shamrock. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now with the uh, original dark green that I'm using. I'm going to take some of that. All right. Okay, Amanda, so if you need the stencil, um, you won't get it right now, right? But you can uh, you can email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com and I'll get that over to you. Or you can also go over to the event tab here on Facebook. What are you, what are you painting on? You're on Facebook. If you go over to the event tab, look on under the discussion board, the stencil will be listed in there. Okay. You can always download it and print it from there. Okay. If you have time to do that right now, otherwise you'll, you'll do that later on. Okay. Switching brushes. Now I'm going to grab my round zero little tiny skinny guy right here. Just going to grab some black. Come in here. Comes across. All right. Here on the inside of the buckle. So I'm using my little skinny brush, right? using just the very point of the bristles so I can get really nice and tight. Also, when I pick up my paint, I'll push the brush against the plate and spin it, making the point even smaller. Okay. Then I'm going to do the belt over here. Inside our buckle, cross on the other side. Okay. 
the shoes. There we go. Oh, you can also do the little sleeves here on the top and the bottom like this. He's got little black stripes on his. I didn't do them there like I did on the over on that side. All right, you guys got about a minute. before we move on to that next step. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to take a little bit of a, let's see, yellow now, just yellow. And my small round skinny brush, let me clean it up a little bit. This is how I clean my brushes. I'll swirl the brush inside the cup. Get as much of that paint out as I can, then I'm going to grab the brush and squeeze out any mixture paint. Okay. Yellow. Um, I'll start with the buckle over here. All of my buckles. All right. Okay, Amanda, see you next time. Thank you for joining in today. Oh, you know what I also forgot? A little bit of light green on my brim, my hat's brim. Just taking some green right across here. Now I'm going to take some orange with my same round brush. I'm going to go ahead and do the beard. Comes around. Okay, like that. A little tuft of hair. I'm also going to do the eyebrows. All right, here's, where, here's how we mix some skin color. We're gonna take a little bit of orange, a little bit of pink. A little bit of orange, a little bit of pink. Then we're gonna take some white. Orange, pink, and white. Whoops, I was off camera. Orange, pink, a little bit, a little bit of each orange, pink, and white. You got red and yellow. You can use red and yellow and white. The red will turn pink with the white. Just a different uh, combination of 
ratios, but you'll get it. So come in here. Sorry, folks. I'm going to speed things up just a little bit. I'm feeling uh, pretty pretty dizzy right now. So, but uh, just going to pick it up a little bit. Again, if you if you fall behind, you'll just finish with the recorded session. <clears throat> So, skin tone all the way around, face, we also have to do it on the, the hands. I'm using my little round brush to go around everything. Okay, there's my face. Let's do the hands, the fingers. Other hand. Take a little bit of my dark, <clears throat> dark blue. That part of my, <clears throat> that part of my leprechaun's eyes are blue. And I'm going to take the same brush and grab a little bit of black. I'm going to grab a little, little bit of orange and a, a little bit of black. I mix the two together, it makes it kind of a brownish color. Just a little bit, not a lot. I'm going to use this out in the mouth. The eyes. Eyebrows. Still using my little round brush. Okay. My hair here coming out underneath my hat. Around. My little leprechaun's beard. And now. A little nose part right here. It's a really light brown color. So I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and some of my skin tone color. Mix the two together. And here we go. There we go. Now I'm going to take black. Still using my real small brown brush. Take some water. And I'm going to outline. Coat. She's outlining everything on the coat right now. Your outline doesn't have to be perfectly all the way across over everything. As long as you can see parts of the outline, it will make your coat stand out. Let's 
Let's outline those pants. Socks. This arm. Let's outline the shamrock. the hat. I'm ready to go back to my brown, just cleaning up my brush a little bit. Outline my fingers. There we go. Uh, oh, and then our face. Okay. There's our little leprechaun, looking happy as can be. Also, we can take a little bit of white. Haven't done that yet. Then we need the little white dot in the center of his eyes, or in the middle of the black part of his eyes. There we go. So a couple of things, folks. I'm going to cut off a little bit early. I'm getting really nauseous and dizzy here at the same time. So uh, I apologize about ending this, this uh, session a little bit early. But here's what I would do next. I would go through and add another layer of green. I would just basically go in and add another layer of everything. Okay, paint to, to even colors out and everything else. I would go through and add, redo what I've just done. The second layer will make things more even and nicer looking. Okay, so. That's what I would do. And then you can also do it to the background if you want. If your background's a little bit splotchy, um, you would do that to your, to your background. I got a little bit of black there by accident. Just gonna take a little bit of a paper towel and wipe that off. But anyway, folks, thank you all for joining me today. Again, I hate to cut out a little early, but I am feeling like I need to go home and nap. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you being here. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your awesome St. Patrick's Day. Hope I help make it a little bit more fun for you. Also, please do not forget to send me pictures of your masterpieces. If you can send them over to me on Painting with Jesse uh, by Messenger here on Facebook. Uh, you can also email me those directly at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. That would be greatly appreciated. Tomorrow at some point, I gather all the pictures that were sent to me, and then I share them in a large post where everyone else can see what you guys got, what everybody else did. All right. Thank you so, so much, folks. Have an awesome rest of the day. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.